Man, some things over here. Oh, there we go. I gotta turn around. What's up, guys? Yeah. I'm stuck on my charger right here. So I have to, like, stay right here. What do y'all think about the new song, though? Good. My boy. John Legend. I was so excited to finally release this. And, uh... I have no idea how to work this. So I'm going to try and see if I can get him to join. I think that's what I was supposed to do. Where are you at, John? How do I do this? Um, I don't like this. Too close to my face. There we go. Babe, how do you... Oh, here we go. Go live. Yeah, I'm such a dad. All right. Now it's it's stuck. It's not saying. What is life right now? There we go. When you go live with someone, anyone you can watch. Okay, but I got him clicked. Baby, come help me, man. I got him clicked and it won't let me send. There's Kate. Hi. Oh, yeah. See what I mean? Go ahead and click. Now what? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think he's got to accept it. Steve Ioki just started a live video. Maybe he can help us. Oh. I'm trying, guys. Hold on. I had, uh, we're in form. Call Nikki real quick. Because I can't call her. And I don't want to hang up yet. Well, yeah, he just, I see him right here. He put laughing face. I'm yeah, here. It's finally. <laughs> I was getting scared, bro. I had too much wine, man. <laughs> what you drinking? I did. My wife just got me on white wine. I'm a beer drinker. So. Uh, I'm a, on the daytime, I'm a rosé drinker. Nighttime, red wine, whiskey. Yeah. How much beer? You don't drink beer? I drink beer. Not much. I, every every once in a while. Yeah. Well, man. How's everybody out there? Yeah. How y'all doing? Y'all got questions for us? Let's talk about um, how this song happened. First of all, my man, Kane Brown, he came to The Voice. Um, he came. He came to The Voice and he performed on the show, but he also came backstage to uh, be a guest on my Emmy-nominated, just kidding, um, <laughs> backstage show called Trailer Talk. And uh, we did a little interview. We sang together, and we were like, wow, our voices really sound good together. And so um, we decided we would get together and create something new. Um, and here we are. We got together earlier in the year. And we were in the studio for a few hours and created something really special. Very special. I love it. We're number one on iTunes. Thank y'all fans for going and doing that, man. We got up there. Thank you. Yeah. But, dude, I've been dying because, you know, we, we posted it January. And then we had a yes. freaking three months to put it out. I was trying to, you know, I would have put it out that day, but. This is, yes. Yeah. I was fine to put it out that day, too. But as soon as, you, you know, know man, labels and managers, yeah. Yeah. as soon as they get involved, everybody, you know, they want to plan and, you know, get it, yeah. you know. But we were ready to put it out to y'all back in January. But either way, the song works now. It worked in January. Um, but now we're in a crazy time period where everybody's stuck at home. So hopefully this music will keep y'all some company during this time. Especially any married people out there, because y'all going to be going <laughs> through a lot of sorry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so it'll be, it'll be good. Just, just play the song. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> just play the song. It'll, it'll answer your question. Anybody who's like like us, you know, musicians, we're on the road a lot, and 
I think that's like a secret advantage for your relationship is that you get to miss each other um, a lot. Yeah. And so when you're home, you're like so excited to see that person. But now my wife has to deal with me 24-7. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For me, man. And you right. have to, oh, you have to ask her how that's going. <laughs> yeah. For me, I'm a I'm a huge gamer. So like I see my wife in there right now. I'm a I'm a huge gamer. I'm I'm on Xbox. She gets mad at me. I'm like, what else are we supposed to do? There's nothing else to do. <laughs> she wants me to watch the Kardashians. I just ain't having it. So <laughs> yeah. There she is right there. And there's yeah. and there's no sports to watch. That's the crazy yeah, part I mean, too. Unless you want to watch bowling or freaking uh reruns of uh cornhole or something like that. <laughs> reruns of they're playing, they're playing like old NBA playoff games, yeah. replaying them on. The <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's tough. It's tough. Um, but yeah, obviously, a lot, lot, a lot, a lot of people going through a lot more than us, <laughs> so oh, yeah. we don't have much right to complain. No, not at all. Should we answer some questions though? I, yeah, I we need questions, y'all. Y'all just send in emojis. We need questions. There's, I see one says, John, where's Chrissy? Chrissy's downstairs. She's on a Zoom conference call. How many of y'all have to do Zoom conference calls these days? <laughs> That's how all the work's getting done. Um, you guys have amazing energy. I don't <laughs> – I honestly, low-key, John knows this. I don't have any any energy if I'm, if I'm not – if I'm sober, I have no energy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm very mellow, so – yeah, I try to turn it up when I'm on The Voice or Trailer Talk or, or on Instagram oh, yeah. Live. I try to turn it up. But at home, chilling, I'm like low energy all the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm the most chill guy there is. But like I said, yeah. my wife got me on this white wine, and I've never felt like this before, and I feel amazing. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. Who knows amazing. what y'all going to get him to say? I'm blessed. <laughs> no, I would never say anything bad. But I'm just <laughs> John. I love you, man. Thank you for doing this song with me. It sounds amazing. I'm so grateful for all the fans out there who are buying it, streaming it, and you guys are awesome. What's the first thing you're gonna do when social distancing is over? That's a good question, dude. Honestly, I want to write some more. You know, I'm still trying to work on my album. Um, I got a lot of songs, yeah. but I, I just I feel like I can get better songs. You know, yeah, um, and just try and outwrite them, and you know. I don't know, so well, let me know if you want me to behind the scenes write. We don't have to duet on everything. I'll, I'll write with you too if you want to do that. I'm I just finished my album. Basically, all the songs are written and recorded. We're just trying to uh, finish the arrangements remotely. Um, like we're having people like send in their parts over the internet and <laughs> and finish the arrangements. But the songs are done, so we're getting there. Um, we're gonna try to put it out late spring early early summer but who knows what's going to happen yeah i mean a lot of people are doing that facetime the facetime writing sessions yeah that'll work i could definitely do that i could definitely do that uh you guys know we're going to be performing the song together at the acms yep. um which is on april 5th which is next week yep and we also have the uh quarantine music video yeah we both <laughs> Self recorded yeah. our video at home and we got a director that's gonna cut it all up and put it together and try to make it make sense. Um who knows? <laughs> I was I, jealous because I saw like Usher and uh and like uh Khalid, they put out videos that you could tell they filmed before the quarantine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was really jealous of them. I was like, man, we don't we don't have that situation hey, going right now. Think think about this. As as life goes on excuse me, as life goes on, we will have a music video when we were in quarantine in twenty twenty. Uh, like Yeah. You know what I mean? Like We'll always remember it because of that. Yeah. Shot a music Absolutely. video in my house as a duet with John Legend on quarantine. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have that forever. <laughs> we'll always have the quarantine. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> Shelby. <laughs> All right. Let's look at these. I haven't. I don't ever really do Instagram lives. What's your favorite food to eat when you're just chilling on the sofa? Mine's DiGiorno. 
I'm actually got oh. one of it right now. Did you want no pepperoni? You just took it out? Is it done? See what I mean? We have a few of those here at the house. The kids like them. That like they love pizza for dinner, and they don't mind that it's frozen and we put it in the oven. It's all good. Delicious, man. I mean, I was yeah. like, I, I came, I, I was raised off like ramen noodles and Kool Aid. So <laughs> for me, it's like it's, we were big on rice aroni growing up. We yeah. love the rice aroni. We love the hamburger helper. No, hamburger we loved, helper, uh, bro. Oh my god. <laughs> we would make we would make homemade chili. We make uh, like spaghetti. I ended up cooking a lot once my parents got divorced because we all lived with my dad, and I started learning how to cook when I was like ten, eleven years old. And uh, so I I knew how to make some struggle plates back in the day. Yeah. Uh, the rice and roni, the hamburger helper, all that. That was my also known as the struggle plate. Yeah, my uh, so my dad. This is the, a little more information. My dad's been in prison or whatever, but he uh, sent me a book. Me and my mom, whenever I was my sophomore year, he sent me a book of 500 different ways to make ramen noodles or ramen noodles. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, that was, Chrissy that was, would that like was, that book. Yeah. Chrissy's still into ramen noodles. She's ramen, still into ramen. ramen. Yeah. It's amazing. One day, have you been to Japan yet? No. So one day you have to go to Japan and actually have the real authentic ramen noodles, but... In the meantime, yeah. doing the doing the little packs from the from the bodega is fine. Yeah, I mean they're they're fire. Let's see what else, yeah. what else we got. Well, wait, what's Somebody your asked how we came up with the song. Um, so uh, let me tell you how we came up with the song. It's kind of an interesting story. Did any of y'all watch Kevin Hart's um, docu series that came out on Netflix? It came out right around the holidays, and everyone was talking about it. And me and Chrissy started watching it while we were on vacation. And one of the, you know, plot elements of the docuseries is him getting in trouble for saying some things many years ago and whether or not he would apologize and, and how he would apologize and should he keep apologizing. And we started talking about what it meant to say, I'm sorry. And, and, so when I, I had a whole conversation with Chrissy about it, and then I, not too long after that, went into the session with Kane, and we started talking about it too. And as anyone who's in a relationship knows, part of being in a relationship is having to say, I'm sorry, because you mess up. You do things that offend your partner, that annoy your partner, that yeah. piss off your partner, and you have to know how to say, I'm sorry, but also try – Try not to do the same thing again so you don't have to keep apologizing for the same thing. Yep. And so me and Kane started talking about that, and um, we both have plenty of experience effing up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and having to say I'm sorry. So we had to, we wanted to write a song about that experience of uh, being in a relationship and knowing to say I'm sorry but also trying not to do that same thing again, so you don't have to say I'm sorry for the same thing over and over. So that's what the song is about. Yeah. And what's crazy for me is I literally, this might be too much information for my wife, but I had an argument literally before I had came into the room. So when John was mentioning it and we were talking about it, I was like, oh, my God, like, let's yeah. write this. I feel this. And it just, like, I, I connected with it immediately. So I just, I fell in love with the song, and then hopefully y'all did as well. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. The song came together so fast, and as soon as we finished it, it was like, oh, wow, this is going to be special. It felt – every session isn't like that. You know, when you you go in and you try to write something with somebody, you, you never written with them before. You never know how, how the session is going to go. But for us, it was just – it just happened, and it happened fast, and it was – we were really happy with it right away. Yeah. Sing it. I would sing it. April 5th, it'll be on CBS, and then after that airs, I mean, we'll be able to sing it whenever we want to sing yeah, it. Yeah, we want to give ACM the first yeah. live performance. They're getting the first live performance. What do our wives think of the song? Chrissy loves the song. That's awesome. And uh, the first verse has the, the first line of the song. Chrissy remembers this moment. 
I remember it too. I said the first time I slept on the couch was our first New Year's Eve. And I was telling Kane about that story when we were writing the song because we really did have a big fight New Year's Eve many years ago. Chris and I, we started dating in 2006, so we've been together for a long time. I'm a lot older than Kane. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so, um, the first, one of the first big fights we ever had was on New Year's Eve. And so I thought it'd be cool to make the first line of the verse. The first time I slept on the couch was our first New Year's Eve. And, uh, and that, 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 that's what kicked it off. And then we just built from there. That's a hard ass line, by the way. <laughs> you feel that? It's like, damn. I was stoked when I heard that. Yeah. Nah. Yeah, man. What what else we got? Can I get a shout out? Tina. What's up, Tina? Oh, shoot. My boy Jimmy. You know Jimmy John? Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy John. Allen. I just saw his name come up. You know Jimmy John? That's what I said. Oh, Jimmy I don't know him. Jimmy, he's a he's one of my good buddies. What's up, man? What's up, Jimmy? He's a he's a country artist over here. Okay. I was doing this. How thing. long have you lived in Nashville, Kane? Uh, so I moved. Uh, babe, when I moved to Nashville, five years ago. I, I yeah, I'm from Chattanooga, so it's only like two hours away. Um, oh, okay, not far. So yeah, did my thing on Facebook, and then I moved up to Nashville. And so I've been with my wife for four years. So. Well, almost five years. Mar- yeah, almost five years. Did y'all meet in Nashville? No, we met in Florida. She lived in Florida at the time, and then she uh, moved down here. We worked. She was an artist as well. Uh, so oh, okay. Artist, so we met through the same guy. Uh, you probably know his name, but I'm not going to mention him. Um, but we met each other through the same guy, and then she she moved in. Brought her bag. She brought, like, four, <laughs> four bags to Nashville, and they went home. It was crazy. There you go. You're here. Yeah. What how's uh doing? how's parenthood during the quarantine? Parenthood is great, man. It's honest. It's one of the greatest things I've ever done. Uh, I was nervous as, at first, but dude, she's she's beautiful and she's my baby. And uh, last but, night though, last night was tough, dude. She didn't sleep at all. And of course, we can't have a night nurse here or anybody to watch her because she uh like the quarantine or whatever. Yeah. But hold on, she, look at her. This is testing everybody's parenting skills. Hey there! <laughs> what you doing? Ah, look at that thing! <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> Hello! <laughs> She's just naked and free. Naked and free. <laughs> yeah, my girl is almost four, Luna, and then Miles will be two in May. So, uh, they're running around the house wreaking havoc. Miles is reckless. Like, he just runs into everything. He just never stops. Yeah. And you always feel like he's on the verge of killing himself because he's like, he doesn't, like, he has no fear. And <laughs> <laughs> Luna's not, was never like that. Like, Luna was more cautious than he is. And Miles is just off the chain. Yeah. How you, wait, so you have, you have three? No, just two. Two, two, two. For now. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we we uh we talked about having more, but I think we're going to wait till she's at least one or two years old um, before we have another. I really want a boy for something. Like, I, I just, I really want a boy. That's the athlete in you. You want you want somebody to. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, my, my athlete in me is telling, me, telling her she's going to be an athlete. She's going to play. Athlete yes, hard, that's. Um, that's what happens you, because a lot of the athletes, they think they want a boy, but then the girls end up being really good at sports too, like Kobe yeah. and his daughter. And then uh, I, one of my friends is a soccer player, and his daughter is super athletic. And my trainer, he has a daughter. She's so athletic. So a lot of guys that think they want a boy for the sports, they end up having daughters that are really good at sports too. Yeah. And for me in high school, like when I was on the I was on the basketball team, whatever, I, I used to coach the girls' basketball team as a player oh, okay. when I was in high school. So me having her, I'm like, I'm I'm just gonna do the same thing with her. But yeah. my wife's like, no, nah, she's gonna be a princess, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's up, Dion? Dion Cole, one of the funniest men alive, shouting us out. 
It says, John, how are the kids adjusting to this, not being able to be with friends? We've been doing um, FaceTimes with some of their friends. So Luna, Miles doesn't have friends yet. He doesn't know what a friend is. But, <laughs> but Luna, you know, she goes to preschool every day. And, you know, she has certain people she likes to play with at school a lot. And so she definitely has people that she misses from school, from class. And so we've done FaceTimes with a few of them. And uh, we FaceTime with my family, like my my brother, Uncle Bumper, she calls him, and uh, and then with my mother and father and her and Chrissy's mom. I mean Chrissy's dad. Chrissy's mom is with us, but um, we just try to FaceTime folks and stay in touch with people that they would miss. And I don't think they understand what the quarantine even means or this whole virus idea. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it means anything to them yet, but. Uh, we try to keep them in touch with folks that they love and uh, want to talk to. That was like uh, that was like me in uh, freaking nine eleven. I was in elementary school, so I, I didn't know oh, man. what was going on. Like I, I saw, you know, everything was happening, but I mean, yeah. I shut school down. That was about it. Yeah, I was, I was, I was in my first job out of college, and I was living in New York City when it happened. So it was wild for me, and. There's been a few moments in my life where it felt kind of like this, but nothing like this. We, I remember 9-11, and then I remember uh, when we had, like, blackouts in New York, and then uh, Hurricane Sandy, I was in New York when that happened, too. So there have been moments that kind of remind me of this, but nothing like this, where the whole world is experiencing it together. And it's so it's such a long period of time where everyone stops working, everyone stops doing so many things that we're used to. We've never had anything like this before. So um, it's crazy. Yeah. I, I, I think I think it's – I think it will be good. I don't want to talk about it too much, but I feel like – Yeah. I think, I think if everybody obeys the rules, stays away from each other, you know, doesn't spread it, we'll, we'll be fine. Yeah, we're going to get through it. We just have yes. to be smart, and we have to think about other people, not just ourselves. Because I think a lot of young people think, well, it's not going to affect me, and I'm going to be fine, so I'm not worried about anybody else. But this is the one time where you got to think about everybody else, too, yeah. not just yourself. Yeah. Yep. We'll see. More to, what is Any more the- questions? What shows are you guys watching? We're watching Tiger King. Tiger King, bro. <laughs> that is – I have a couple people message me about that. And I, we started watching it, and Kate was like, I don't, I don't know what everybody likes about this. I was like, let's just watch a couple more episodes. And is the name Joe? Is that it, Joe? Joe Exotic. That <laughs> man is crazy. He reminds me. See, I live, I live out here in the. Uh, hold on, let me show you. So I live literally in the sticks. I'm surrounded by <laughs> woods, and like I, so I had a. Hopefully, he don't see this. So I had a dude when I first moved in here. He walked up here. He had his dog uh-huh. in his arm. I told my wife, I said, that's, I go, that's his wife. <laughs> he was walking up the, the road with her in his hand. <laughs> but, like, but, like, redneck is heck around me. And so when I see Joe exotic talking, it's just, I feel at home. When, when I was <laughs> so I haven't, I haven't finished, I haven't finished anything, like the, the episodes yet. I, I think we're on, like, episode four or five. I don't know how many episodes there are. Things will take a turn for Joe. I'm gonna tell you that, Kane. <laughs> no, well, no, he's in jail, ain't he? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I don't know what he's done yet, but right yeah, now, he did some, he did some shit. Did where some I'm shit. at right now, I like Joe. Joe ain't <laughs> feel bad yet. But what's your take? How do you feel? Oh, it, it's so entertaining. And wh- one of my biggest issues the whole time was there were there was this. The debate between the so-called, you know, exploitative breeders like Joe versus the yeah. so-called conservationists like Carol. But I'm she's like, what's the difference? She's still keeping them. She's doing the same. Yeah, thing. I'm like, what? What's the difference? What are you guys doing that's different with the tigers? So I had no idea what was different about them, and Carol seemed real iffy yeah. and suspicious. Um, <laughs> so. Neither one of them came off great to me, but they were both extremely entertaining. So it's definitely worth watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I got to finish it now. I got to finish it. 
Yeah, you got to finish it. You got to hey, finish we it. we got to finish Tiger King. All right, give me some of those. All right, I any more questions game? before we go? What's your favorite video game? My favorite is Madden. I'm a big Madden fan. I, love, I mean, I play everything. I'm just, I'm just a gamer. So, how'd you decide to work together? I think we answered that already. Yeah. When will we sing together again at the ACMs next yeah. week? April fifth. On uh, what is it? CBS. I have no idea. I think it's CBS. CBS. I don't want to say <laughs> CBS first. If it's not CB, yeah, CBS. Okay. Kane, A E. What does it say? Oh, are you going to do anything with? Late. Uh, I mean, not as of now. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Your favorite sports teams. My favorite in college and my favorite team is Ohio State, pretty much, of everything, but especially football. But uh, I grew up in Ohio, so I root for the Bengals, even though they – not so good right now. Um, and um, and I root for Ohio State. And I also root for the Lakers because I love LeBron, and I grew up a Magic Johnson fan. So I root for the Lakers, too. I'm a Georgia Bulldog. You're welcome for Jameis – I almost said Jameis Winston. Oh, my God. <laughs> quarterback, though. And then uh, Justin – Yes, Fred. we love him. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> And thank I, you for I, thank you for underestimating his abilities. I, I never wanted to let him go. Sending him to Columbus. <laughs> I never wanted. And Jake Fromm left. This would be his year, but I didn't want to let him go. Um, but NFL, I just play fantasy and NBA. I mean, I'm going for the Lakers, of course, because I mean, I like LeBron, I like Javale McGee, I like Anthony Davis. But um, you know, the Kobe tragedy thing. Like, I, I just I want the Lakers to win. Yeah. Um, but I just love, I love basketball, so I just love players in general. I don't really have a favorite team. So, yeah. All right, guys. Yeah, man. So, we really appreciate y'all hanging out with us. Hey, someone, um, said, someone said drunk came for president. <laughs> drunk came for president. Just a little wine. Let's go. <laughs> All right. But, yeah, man, our song's out. ACM's April 5th. Music video it's coming. We're gonna do good. It's coming. The quarantine video that we'll always remember. Yeah. All Appreciate right. y'all. Thank you for supporting the song. Number one on iTunes. Keep listening. Keep streaming. Tell your friends about it. Ask the radio to play it. Do all those things. And uh, we love y'all. Love you guys. Y'all be safe. Peace. Later, John. Can't.